than 1.5 million Americans are diagnosed with some form of cancer every year. Joe Lopez and his wife Carol have experienced cancer in their family. Those struggles led them to start a new foundation called Cancer Awareness of Nevada. Our board of directors, the people that we have on our board, got together and, and, and talked about the cancer in our families and our friends that we see going on daily. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things was we wanted to have some avenue for people to get information about pre-testing pre possibly, help them with funding, uh, you know, their medical bills, you know, as they're going through treatment because cancer doesn't affect just the, just the, just the patient. I mean, it's your whole family's affected. We wanted to do something that was out there for all different types of cancer, not just for uh, prostate cancer, not just for, uh, you know, breast cancer, but we wanted to have an avenue for people to come in and be able to get some kind of help it's not always about money, but we have you know, situations where we can refer them to a doctor for some pre-screening for, uh, you know, testing that needs to be done, you know, like men. Men need to be tested for prostate cancer. But those that can't afford to go in, we have, we have avenues to help them get that treatment and get those tests done. One of the organization's first big fundraisers is called Dash for Dads. It was a huge success last year. Not only did they have a large turnout, but it brought people struggling with cancer as well as cancer survivors to the attention of Joe and Carol Lopez. We're doing the second annual Dash for Dads for prostate cancer at the Sparks Marina on Father's Day. Well, that sounds interesting. Tell me more about that. Well, last year was the first year that we put the event on. And, you know, part of the thought was our group was that, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there for women. We're not knocking, you know, what, what they get, mm -hmm. but there wasn't anything for men. So we decided to do a 5K race and tie it into prostate cancer. And it was our first year and it was very successful. Over 500 runners came out. We raised just under $32,000 for prostate cancer. You know, and through this event, you know, one of our participants, John Irwin, mm -hmm. came out. He's been diagnosed with prostate cancer. I got involved with Dash for Dads because I have a daughter who is associated, or at least is a, uh, a friend of Joe Lopez. And so she convinced us on Father's Day to get the whole family out with my, at least three of my children here to live locally with their spouses and, their, and my grandchildren. So we all went over to Sparks Marina, started running around. The, I started chasing people that were faster than me in the 5K run. John explains to me that they were having a health fair where he works. Since PSA levels are an indicator of prostate cancer, John decides to have his checked. I became aware of uh, cancer in my own life uh, through um, a series of blood, blood tests that I have done. Like most guys, we usually don't go to the physician unless something's actually broken and a bone is piercing the skin or we absolutely have to go to an emergency ambulance flight, that sort of stuff, because most guys are a little stubborn that way. With elevated PSA levels, John has reason to be concerned, but it could be a number of things. Three months later, John has a follow-up test. The PSA, three months later, it went up to 5.6. So, okay, something's taking place. So a few months later, I get in with the urologist, and we go ahead and set up and have a biopsy done at that point determined that yes, I did have uh, some active cancer cells. Doctors use technical terms, but John has his own terms for the options in front of him. As I winnowed it down, I said, you either cook it, you cut it, or freeze it. And that's, those are fairly self-explanatory, and you can cook it either external radiation or internal radiation, or you can cook it chemically. And, and by that, I mean an IV solution or, or that sort to deal with the cancer chemically. Or you can cut it, have the, the gland, the prostate gland removed, prostatectomy. And then the uh, last option is you can have uh, portions of it frozen. So the cancer cells will die that way. John has some serious decisions to make. Well, once you get uh, diagnosed that you do have potential cancer, the next questions are how aggressive is it? Where is it going in your body? Uh, what are the next steps? What are the next steps of treatment in particular? And then in the fall, we were scheduled for another biopsy. And I thought, you know, what's the biopsy going to tell me? I still have cancer. So then a decision was made of, let's just go ahead and have it removed. Because the one thing I think, uh, at least I can speak for myself, but instead of our other cancer survivors, is the nice thing you know is it's gone. Because that's the one question everybody asks, how can we get rid of this? How can we make it go away? So you have some sense of accomplishment and some sense of relief 
that yes, it is gone and I can move on to the next stage of growing old because growing old is not for the weak of heart, believe me. According to the American Cancer Society, half of all men and a third of all women in the U.S. will develop cancer in their lifetime. Cancer Awareness of Nevada is here to be a resource. You know, what we're, what we're doing is we want to be a resource for people who don't have any idea where to go. You know, when you're diagnosed with cancer, it's pretty traumatic. So there's, you know, there's so many different types of cancer out there. And it's, you know, where do I go? Where do I find this information? You know, we want to be one of those resources. Last week, you heard the story of Randall, and we spoke with GI consultants about the importance of getting your colonoscopy. This week, you heard from John, and we hope his story has encouraged you to test your PSA levels. Early detection is the key to cancer survival.